Right, thank you folks, we're ready now, okay? Uh, I'm, slightly, I'm slightly worried at this point because, believe it or not, what I'm going to say actually links in what David Cameron was going to say. And I've known David for donkey's years, and this is probably going to be a first, David, that we're, we're connected in terms of things. Anyway, here we go again. Thank you for my time in Murray. Uh, I've managed to get around quite a few schools in my short time, and I, I'm beginning to find I know Murray quite well already, okay? So, what I was planning to do for the next 10 minutes was just to take things nice and simple. Now, I'm a, I'm a humble primary teacher, all right? That's my background. Keep things simple. So, show, show a few slides, show a few pictures. So, in, in Gordon just agreed totally with me there, okay? A humble primary head teacher talking to a humble primary head teacher. Now, if you can't see, not like David's earlier on, if you can't see my slides, you have to see my slides. They're pictures, all right? So, if you can all see there... So what I want to do just now, if I could see how to work this, I'll just move it, I'll just move it here. Okay, could you all think, I'm trying to think where we are at the moment, how, how do we move this forward? This is based on my 25 years as a head teacher, all my years as an HMI and what I see around the schools in the country, and what I've seen in schools in Murray over the short period of time I've been here. All think to your last staff meeting, okay? I'm going to put up here just a few pictures. When you think about your last staff meeting, you see people in the staff room that are really ahead of the game. They are charging ahead, desperate to get where they're going. They know exactly where they're going. See anybody in your staff room about that? Okay. We're clear where we're going. We're prowling along. We know, we know exactly where we're going to go. Quite a lot of staff in your staff room. We're going to get there. Do we see people who are, I'm thinking about it, and I'll get this right, and we'll go there? Or do we see people, well, they're going there, maybe I should be going as well. Do they actually know where they're going, but I'm going to follow anyway, okay? Or do you see people in your staff room, which maybe what Lawrence was talking about there? <laughs> I've been here, I've been here for 20 years, okay? This place is really good, Murray's really good, etc. What well, was Crichton for excellence again? Okay. <laughs> I see people like that in every staff room, in every school I'm in over the country. Okay? How do we move that forward with all these different different members of staff? One thing that really influenced me in my career about 20 15 years ago, I'm a, I do a lot of work in corporate learning and that. I, I was in an, at an international conference of corporate learning. We were playing a change game, okay? Now, if you could just picture a board game that takes you through all the, all the periods of change, you know, the awareness raising, the planning, the implementation, the embedding, the self-evaluation. You got that picture? Down the left-hand side, all the characters involved with the local authority and schools with descriptions of them, you know, uh, like so, Rose, Ro Rosemary, uh, the, the dynamic head teacher, I just I was with Rosemary yesterday, Go, going right down the descriptions, the descriptions of all the people involved. And what we had to do was we had to move all these characters through the, the, the periods of change. Get me? Okay. And what happened as we were doing this, some characters, of course, weren't moving forward. Maybe, maybe that last picture I put up, okay? Whilst we were having a discussion about what we, we were doing, do you know, everybody from Scotland said, we have to be doing something to move everybody forward. Everybody from other countries said to me, they've missed the boat, go with the rest. Now, what made me think way back then was, do we actually run our schools according to the lowest common denominator? Or do we move them forward with the people that are going? My answer is we probably do. I probably ran a school according to the lowest common denominator, but we have to work with the people that are going there. I'll be coming back to that just in a second there. Now, if we can... Let's just not... Use that, it's okay, I'll just, I'll just use this, okay. Now, if you think about your curriculum, see, I'm full of analogies. I mean, Rosemary heard, heard my donkey one yesterday at uh, Millbank, okay, I'm sure others have heard other ones there. Think of your curriculum, okay? Think of the curriculum you have in your school. How do you see your curriculum at the moment? Do you see it as this really flashy sports car that's moving forward? Do you? 
Do you see it as a top of the range BMW? That's what you really want, and it's really, you know it's a really shiny thing that you polish every day and all the rest of it. <laughs> is that how you see your curriculum? Is it a car that's really fit for the road that you're going to drive forward, and it's definitely going to get you where you're going? Is it a wee family car that you know is going to get you from A to B? Maybe a bit short in the leg room for somebody like me. Maybe a small boot if you've got a family. Or is it something that's maybe just a bit rusted and worn out and certainly a colour I wouldn't be seen, seen dead in, OK? Where is the uniqueness of your curriculum? If a car's fit for purpose, if, it's a, if, it, if a car is fit what you need it for your family, yourself, etc., the curriculum should be unique to your school, okay? Now, if you look at the new How Good Is the School, the second challenge question in the curriculum section, and you think I really know that inside out, but I was talking about it yesterday to somebody. That, uh, the second challenge question is about how do you ensure all the factors show the uniqueness of your school? That comes back, comes back to the relevance. If we can stay on the car theme for a couple of minutes, in a car... If you didn't put the petrol in, the engine wouldn't work. If you didn't know when to stop your curriculum and see it's roadworthy, the tyres would go out and it wouldn't work. And if your, curriculum, if your car wasn't getting the MOT, <coughs> the curriculum wouldn't work. So if that's your curriculum, what keeps everything going, OK? But there's a reason why I'm coming to this. This is where it links to what David was saying this morning. If you look on the influences that are on schools at the moment, okay? Now, if you think of all the things that have been coming in, creating for excellence, the BGE, modern language in primary schools, enterprise, if you look at the GERFEX, skills for work, learning, creativity, the attainment challenge, everything to me seems like it's coming in from different silos, okay? Primary schools can't cope with silos. I'm sure secondary schools can't cope with them too well, but we can't cope with things coming in as silos. And it's usually up to the poor head teacher, the poor teacher in schools, to try and to try and manage what that means for staff. So basically, what I'm seeing is everything is can be silo orientated, things seen as separate as coming from angles, and the one thing that you can take away from the creativity conversation, uh, conversation day to day is that creativity is a vehicle for making the connections across everything. So uh, it's moving forward with that. Do staff still need support in seeing connections? But no matter what, we'll see everything through the eyes of the child, OK? So <coughs> we'll always should look at the curriculum through the child. <coughs> and those of you who have heard me talk you know, in my time in Murray, you've probably heard me saying the word relevance. Who has heard me using the word relevance in the time I've been in my... Quite, quite, a, quite a lot of people, OK? It's relevance, and I'll, I'll come back to that in a second, what, what I exactly mean by that. So what can this mean? And this is, a, this is the big question that we have here. Staying on the car engine one, are we aware that if we alter one part of the curriculum, what impact that has on something else? If we've got to be creative with the curriculum, do we know the impact of putting something in, whether it's a secondary department, whether it's a primary, what is the impact? Because that, that thing that you're putting in for attainment <laughs> might have that negative impact on something else. So David mentioned how good is our school today. How good is our school, the new how good is our school, puts self-evaluation for self-improvement up front. <laughs> and that shouldn't just be a one-off time when the inspectors are coming. It should be a regular thing going. Come back to that in a second. For instance, what is not being done? Now, I'm going to quote something just because it was on the news today. The Daily Mail was on the news today. OK? And I've got no opinion on whether uh, things like the Daily Mail are going to work or not going to work. What I would ask if I was a head teacher. What am I not doing? OK? What's being diluted? <coughs> I suspect if there's anything, any part of the curriculum that's going to be diluted across the country, not because of the Daily Mail, it's the expressive arts. OK? I don't see enough 
music across the country. I don't see enough drama. I don't see enough art across the country, particularly music. And that's one of the reasons, as the subject specialist for expressive arts for Education Scotland, we are actually bringing out a national initiative in September, a framework for singing for primary schools called Singing to Learn, Learning to Sing, which brings the skills of life and work together into singing, OK? Coming out in, in, in September, I think it's coming out. But again, if that's been implemented in a, in a school, what are schools not being done? What is being diluted? Do you keep the curriculum under constant review? And do you know how to put it back together again? I think that's the important thing. The, the more you keep the curriculum under review with how good is our school, the easier it is to slot things back in together again. Because one of the things that's coming out of the Scottish Attainment Challenge is you need things at two levels. You need things that is a level, it's a policy for your school, but there needs to be something underlying that for the children that are underachieving in order to close that equity gap. Does that make sense, sir? So everything's got to be a double thing. So do you know how to put the curriculum together again? Can I just move on? That's the... How, how good is our school is the kind of the oil for all happening, and that has got to be an ongoing place. And I, I know Vivian has asked me to do some work with self-evaluation and things like IDL with groups of you, which I'm happy to do. Happy to do other things if anybody wanted to do that at any point. Do you ever self-evaluate innovatively, for instance? Do you ever self-evaluate around the principles of curriculum design? Okay? If you are actually doing a learning visit. I've put that slide around that way because, to me, everything hangs on progression and it's built on relevance, and that's the school context. <coughs> a different way to monitor, maybe. You've all got copies of the 3 to 18 Impact Creativity Review in your folders there, okay, which I was part of the core team when we did it three years ago. There's a section in there that shows you where we saw lessons were intended to be creative. We saw all these. Now, since the creativity review came out, I've been suggesting to schools when I've been going around the country that's maybe a way of actually getting into creativity, to do learning visits just around that. Uh, you can get that straight out of there, or I can give you a copy of the slide. Do you ever do your reviews around Shinari? Do you ever self-evaluate around Shinari? Uh, do you even simply ever look at the higher order thinking skills and look at the higher order thinking skills in different parts of the schools and the relationship between problem solving and reading, the relationship to maybe performance? Quite simple, different ways to, 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 to see that oil. Now, we've kind of talked about creative, creative self-evaluation there. Very briefly, creative leadership. Because creative leadership is what, how good is their schools all about? Now, what is creative leadership? David knows I've got a musical background because he's had to suffer many of my shows when his daughter was in them, OK? Uh, and I use this analogy when I'm doing inspections, OK? When I'm starting an inspection, I will sit with the staff and say that when we're going into a classroom, we are not going in a classroom to watch you teach. We're going in to watch the children learn, OK? But as a conductor, OK, you are knowing when to bring in the learning support. You're no, you know when you've got to bring in the management. You, you know when you're wanting to bring in certain thinking skills. So you are pulling it together. We are watching the children learn because it all comes back to what the children can and can't do. Now, if I take that analogy just slightly further and you're the leader, okay, which conductor are you? Are you the precise one that knows exactly what's happening and bringing everybody in with the small beats? Because that's what the head teacher does. The head teacher keeps that beat. Isn't that right? That's the job. Are you the one that's really confident about leadership at all levels and able to bring them in? Are you the one that's really able to go for it, maybe slightly hair-raising it to and be that ambition? Are you the one that's quite, quite up for Going, going and seeing it straight to these ostriches with their heads in the sand, okay? No matter how hair-raising that can be, are you maybe anything goes here, is that maybe your style of leadership? I've even seen in some schools when the head teachers 
are not even facing the same way as the staff. <laughs> and they're busy thinking they're conducting and the staff are doing something behind them. Okay? Quite a good way of thinking about things. Now, just moving on from that, I won't go into that because people have seen me talking about what the Scottish Attainment Challenge is saying about the, 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 the main things that will raise attainment, the effective questioning, etc., etc. You notice I've got creativity there, which should be there. But the big thing about the Scottish Attainment Challenge is, is making sure that something happens. And to me, that's my motto for creativity, <laughs> making something happen. And the legacy of approach and not playing at things. I remember, for instance, years, years ago in primary schools, there used to be a really creative time before, before 5 to 14 came in. But you can guarantee that if a teacher was going to Egypt for her holidays, the kids would be doing a project on Egypt <laughs> before she went. Am I right? Yeah. You know? And if they had gone to America for their holidays, you can guarantee that when they came back, the kids would be singing every cowboy song in the book. Okay? It's what I called a fancy day in as a head teacher. Okay? The Scottish Attainment Challenge is not about a fancy day in. The Scottish Attainment Challenge is you know what your individual school is that can make a difference for the children in your school because you know it better than anybody else. Does that make sense? Though? Okay, so it's stick with it, knowing if you're implementing something, what difference it's going to make to other areas of the curriculum. If I could just move forward, the, the, the question, I won't go into that. You've all seen that poster about the closing the equity gap, but are we, are we clear in our minds what the equity gap is? Does this slide help you? The difference between equality and equity. Because when I saw that, I just had the ha-ha experience. Okay? That's why we need two approaches. We need a, a general approach, but we need something specific for what we do lying, lying underneath that. David mentioned a safety net today. This wasn't planned. Okay? But what is your safety net? I would suggest that your safety net is a Murray Teach Learning Policy... Which, is, which we're implementing at the moment, is the curriculum, as we've mentioned, is self-evaluation. And the creative leader will always make sure that their safety net is a springboard as well. So the springboard for really creative teaching and learning. So that's why I kind of mentioned the safety net and, and leadership. So we have to get this right, and we will get this right, So I'm, what I want you all to do is when you go back to your schools whenever, okay, well tomorrow I assume, this is just Thursday, um, go into a class, and if you're a partner here, go into a class, just look at one child, sit beside one child, and the question is, what does this mean for her? Thank you very much.